How's it going everybody? Thank you for checking my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's gonna be the conclusion on the series when I cover the basics of gambling in Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you missed either of the previous videos, the first one being gambling for circlets and coronets, and the second one being gambling amulets, make sure to click the card in the corner up above so that way you can get caught up. And in this video, we're gonna cover the basics of gambling for rings. And that's gonna conclude the stats, the character level that you should use, and a lot more. And while I discuss the topics of this video, I'm gonna be having going on in the background, me gambling with 50 million gold. Go! This is a really fun series to be able to research for because I learned a lot from this. I didn't know the specifics when it comes to the prefixes, suffixes, and what particular levels you can find them at. And I want to make sure to give credit where credit is due. If any of you guys want to look even more into any of this, I do have links in the description below for you guys to be able to follow, as well as a website that has all the lists of the prefixes and suffixes and what particular levels you can find them at. So that way, again, if you want to be able to do more research and to be able to see what particular stats you're looking for and how to be able to obtain them, they're there for you to be able to use. I was able to get 50 million gold for this project was I took my gold find barbarian to Travancore and ran him for roughly about an hour, hour and a half. It didn't take too long, but if any of you guys want to check out the build guide in action, go check the card in the corner up above. I hope that you guys will enjoy it and maybe you guys will go ahead and try it out for yourself. I'm going to have all the gambling going on in the background so that way you're not subjected to seeing all the junk gambles that rolled, which were unfortunately a majority of them. That way we can simply just focus on the information and if anything worth mentioning rolled, I'll make sure to highlight that at the very end of the video. But with that said, let's get into the video. First thing I want to bring up is the concept of low risk and high yield situation. Little risk, a lot of yield. Meaning that you're going to be getting the absolute most for doing the least amount of work possible. And what that means is for gambling, you want to pair up an Edgebow Rune Word with a Geese Grand Charm because both of them have the ability to lower the vendor prices. And especially when it comes to gambling 1 million, 10 million, 50 million in my case. The ability to have more gambles with using these, rarely speaking to using neither of them or even just one, is going to be very noticeable. So it's important that even if you're not gambling a high amount, you want to be able to try to lower the vendor prices if possible. So either using an Edgebow Rune Ward or a Geese Grand Charm or pairing them up on your character is going to make a huge difference in the amount of gambles you would be able to get. There are specific NPCs that would allow you to be able to gamble in the game, and each act has their own specific NPC that you can choose from. And they are Geed in Act 1, Elzix in Act 2, Alcor in Act 3, Jamela in Act 4, and lastly Neelithak or Anya if you saved her in her quest in Act 5. When gambling, regardless of the item, it's important to be able to understand the difference in character level and item level as they are important to be able to know what particular mods or stats, whatever you want to call them, will be able to potentially roll on the item. The gambling level ranges are going to be plus 4 to negative 5 of your character level, meaning that for example if you are a level 90 character, you would have a range of 85 to 94 to be able to roll for that item, which is important to be able to understand for the specific suffixes and prefixes that you want to find on the item. When it comes to gambling, it also does not matter what difficulty you're in. For example, if you have a level 90 character and you're gambling in held difficulty versus going back into normal difficulty and gambling, you're not going to have any better chances in normal difficulty compared to speaking to held difficulty. Despite I would not know why you'd want to go back to Nightmare difficulty unless you were just simply rerolling maps and then you go back into Hell difficulty to try to actually get the map that you desire. Last note where the point before we actually get to the amulets, neither your magic find on your character or your mercenary or the player setting if you're playing single player offline or partying up when it comes to multiplayer is going to have any effect on what we'll be able to actually gamble. It's all just based on random number generation or RNG which in a sense is gambling in its own right because, for example, if you are magic finding around the game to be able to look for particular items or trying to hunt for runes, it's all going to be completely randomized because you could get a rune in one particular run or you could wait hundreds of runs to be able to get something that is not desirable or hopefully something that you're really looking for. So take that into consideration when it comes to gambling. It's all simply just based on random number generation or RNG and there's only a few things that you can do to be able to better your odds and in this case it's going to be having the perfect character level for the particular item that you're looking for. I know people don't typically look at rings as something that they'd want to actually gamble, especially when they have other alternatives such as amulets, circlets, and coronets instead. However, for people that want to be able to at least round out their builds, if not to be able to just have a placeholder until they can get something better down the line to be able to replace it, gambling rings can be really beneficial for your build. The magic or the blue rings typically only roll with two different mods or stats on them, a prefix and a suffix. I did find one with three lines of text, but I didn't save it to highlight at the end of this video. However, I'm not sure if three is the actual limit or if it goes higher than that. So please, if anybody knows, let me know down in the comments if you know. A rare yellow ring has the potential to be able to roll with up to six different stats or mods. However, do keep in mind that just because it has the potential to roll with more stats and mods, comparatively speaking to a magic ring, that it means that by default, the rare ring is going to be a lot more beneficial to your build, as it could have up to six lines of complete junk that are not going to be helpful to you whatsoever, 
whereas the one or two lines of text from the magic ring would be exactly what you're looking for, bringing a lot more value to your build. When it comes to the gambling process of upgrading from magics to rares to sets to uniques, the odds of them actually increasing in quality are Unique is 1 in 2,000, 0.05%. Set is 2 in 2,000, 0.1%. Rare is 200 in 2,000, 10%. And Magic is 1,797 in 2,000, at 89%. This is why you tend to find a lot more Magic items compared to speaking to anything else. However, despite the fact that the odds are really low to be able to upgrade to a unique item, they still aren't zero. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! A range quality level sits at the lowest level being 1, meaning when it comes to gambling them for their favorable mods and stats, their affix level is going to be identical to their item level. As far as the levels of the more preferred stats and mods, whatever you want to call them, that you'd want to actually gamble for, here are a few examples of when you would want to actually gamble for the item. 40% gold find at level 1, FCR at level 5, 25% magic find at level 42, 15 all res at level 67, 40 to life at level 68, 20 to strength at level 74, 6% life leech at level 78, and 6% mana leech at level 86. When looking at these stats, if you're wanting to gamble any of them, take into consideration that the affix level that you are looking for should be at the lowest range of the plus 4 and negative 5 from your character level when gambling. That way you have a 100% chance to be able to actually gamble that particular stat on the ring. So for example, as extreme as it would be, let's say you're trying to gamble for a ring that has SCR, life, dual leech, and all res. The affix level to take consideration is going to be mana leeches at 86 because everything else when it comes to the mods is going to be a lot lower. So when it comes to the ranges between the plus 4 and negative 5 compared to speaking to your character level, 86 should be at the lowest end of that so that way you have at least a 100% chance to potentially gamble that ring. For those that would be interested in trying to gamble for an SOJ, the quality level of a Sojourn Jordan is 39, meaning that the character level that you'd want to be able to use to target that ring is going to be 44 because it fits within the negative 5 range of your character level and the quality level of the Sojourn Jordan. Now, the odds of it actually gambling up to a unique ring, let alone a Stone of Jordan, are going to be incredibly low. And unfortunately, it costs around 2.5 to 2.6 billion gold to be able to do so. However, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. For anyone that might be confused as to why you'd want to use that particular character level to target for an SOJ in gambling, compared to speaking to using a much higher, if not the highest, character level that you can, it's the exact same logic when it comes to target farming Nightmare and Dario for an SOJ, so I'll use her as the example. When it comes to Nightmare, she is only able to drop a few different unique rings because of her drop table, so when it comes to her actually dropping a unique ring, it has a better chance of being an SOJ by default. However, when it comes to going up into Hell difficulty, her drop table increases to be able to include even more items. So when it comes to her actually dropping a unique ring, it has a lesser chance of it actually being an SOJ because of the fact that she can drop even more unique rings than she would in Nightmare Difficulty. This is why it's really important to take consideration what particular mods or stats that you're looking for. That way you don't go past the particular quality level of the item to be able to make sure that you have better chances of being able to gamble it. Now for the results, these have to be the best, comparatively speaking, to the amulets, circlets, and coronets video I did for this series. Let's go ahead and check it out. Starting with the rare 10% FCR rings, I ended up getting a few more than expected. However, most of them wouldn't be more useful than for the FCR on them. You're welcome to pause the video anytime you want if you want to check out any of the specific stats aside from the FCR. However, the last four I would say are the best of the rolls. I also got a lot of magic 10% FCR rings. I eventually stopped saving them aside from the four collected with the last one having some decent fire res on it. If you are a caster character looking for FCR rings, especially early on, you should be able to get two of them pretty easily with less than a million gold. The next section has the 30% to a single resistance. I unfortunately didn't get any more than the one 30% fire res ring, but the other three elements I at least got two of them. Good for those needing a little boost while farming for something better or just need to be able to round out their builds. The next section covers the dual res rings. None are amazing, but the one with lightning, fire, gold find, and magic find would be amazing early on and for how early you can use it at level 13. Moving up is the only tri res ring I was able to gamble, followed by the quad res rings. Again, nothing GG this time, but the potential is there to be able to get something good if I was able to spend more gold. Rounding off the stash page are the plus 15 all res rings. I was hoping for better rolls, but unfortunately RNG was not with me this time. Within the inventory, to start are the gold find rings. I did find a few that had 40% to gold find. Great for those budget characters farming Travancle for a boost to gold find while looking for runes and jewelry from the council. I got one dual leech ring. Nothing to write home about, but was stoked to be able to get one from gambling. Unfortunately, I didn't get any 40% magic find rings. However, I was able to get these two with 25% magic find. Great for those who don't have nagel rings or at least really high rolled nagel rings or want to be able to replace them for preferable mods additionally rolled on these rings. Lastly are the one of each ring I got that was set and unique. The set is a Cathan seal and the unique is a Minolt. And if you unfortunately were not able to actually get anything useful when it comes to gambling for rings, 
At the very least, you could be able to craft these into blood rings so that way they don't actually just completely go to waste. And that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're able to see if Gambling for Rings and Diablo 2 Resurrect is gonna be beneficial for you for any of your builds. And if at the very least, you were able to learn something new about the process of Gambling Rings when it comes to the different stats that you can roll, when you'd wanna actually target for them to be able to make use of the better chances of them actually gambling, and just overall enjoy the video. If you like this kind of content wanna see more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Come on. Come on, man. There you are. There you are. And if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by leaving a like. It really is appreciated to be able to help my channel to grow. And if you want to see more of my Diablo 2 Resurrected content, there's going to be a card in the corner above for you to check out. And there's a lot more videos already in it with a lot more coming in the very near future. Other than that, hope you're all staying safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.